Hey, hello, Olathe West. We are going to do a timed practice today for the ACT math section. It's going to be 30 question numbers, 30 to 40. <clears throat> so materials you will need. Well, besides the pen and pencil and paper and graphing calculator and willingness to learn and positive attitude, you also need to grab the questions. So two ways to do it. If you're watching this in a classroom, go ahead and everyone pull out your cell phones and scan the QR code in front of you. If you're um, using a computer, you can do the same thing or type in the bit.ly web address but everyone will need the questions in front of them so they can do them on a piece of paper. <clears throat> I'll give you all one minute to kind of get that together. about 30 more seconds for everyone to um, scan the QR code and get the questions in front of them. Don't start yet. We're going to do a time start for everyone. Just get the materials ready so you're ready to go. Okay, another 15 seconds here. Okay, so everyone should have the questions in front of them. You're gonna have 10 minutes to do these 11 questions. You may begin.
Okay, I hope you found those ones challenging. We're gonna go ahead and go through the questions now. Question number 30, the question says, um, how much income is left for the unbudgeted items? Well, if we add up all of these fractions, and again, I would say use your calculator, they add up to be 15 out of 16. Well, that leaves 1 16th left for us. Answer is letter J. Okay, question 31. I know we've seen this one similar to this twice. This is a repeating decimal. And so it's going to be like, you know, 0 0.1357, 1357, and so on. We need to find out what the 322nd digit is. So what you want to do, since it repeats every four, right? You want to take 322 and divide by four using your calculator. You will wind up with 80.5. That means there will be 80 of these 1357s and then half of the next one. Well, that would mean a three would be left, right? Because that means we would have the 13 would be there. That's half of what is left, right? 0.5. Okay, um, 32 is kind of interesting. And on 32, um, I made a table to figure it out. I didn't want to kind of really do a lot of math. So I kind of made a table for seconds and then for you and for your friend and for the total amount, right? So like, Zero seconds, one second, two, three, four, five. I kind of went up to thinking about six seconds there because I noticed that like six was, you know, halfway through. Well, the reading says that um, you start pouring water from your can at a rate of four ounces per second. So time zero, nothing but you're gonna be putting four in every time. So it's like four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on, right? Now your friend um, starts at three seconds after, and they're only doing two ounces per. So your friend is not doing anything, and then, you know, two, so two, four, six. If we go ahead and figure out the totals now, this column totals would be zero. At one second, there's four. At two seconds, there's eight. Three seconds, there's 12. Again, we're trying to wait until we get to a total of 24. Here there are um, 18. Here there's 24. Oh, I'm just gonna stop there. We got the 24. And that happened at five seconds. So the answer is letter G. I know there's algebraic ways to do this too, but the goal is you want to try to get it as quick as you can. And sometimes with these double rates, a table is the quickest way. Okay, question number 33. A little bit interesting, you have to think about it. You're told that a third of the pieces are brown and then the remaining pieces are evenly distributed among the other five colors. So for brown, there's a third of the pieces. And then for the rest of them, right, there's two thirds left over for the rest of them. Now that's gonna be divided evenly among everyone. So I would just divide by five. So I would do two thirds divided by five. If you're not sure how to use your calculator for that, you know, put in a fraction template, two divided by three, and the whole thing will be divided by five. So two thirds divided by five, there's our answer, one fifth. Uh, so I do that one right, letter B. I typed something in wrong there. Oh yeah, sure did. Uh, two thirds, right? There we go, there's our answer. Okay, uh, question number 34 asks about the range which we should remember are the Y values. Now, if you have not yet graphed quadratics, 
it's okay. We can put this into the calculator and graph it. And um, let's go ahead and do that. What you do is you um, go to y equals and you type in the function you're gonna graph. Make sure to use the negative sign at the bottom here in the number pad, not the subtraction sign for that outside piece. And then we'll press a graph. Now the range are the Y values and it looks like when I'm coming through here, the biggest Y value we get is gonna be at a four. And so looking at the answer choices, I would have to say letter G would be our answer. Okay, you could also get it that if you know a quadratic normally graphs like this, but since you have a negative there, the graph's going to be upside down and the plus four moves it up four spots. We could see it that way too and say the highest value is four and it comes all the way down here to negative infinity, but calculator worked just fine. Okay, question 35. The best way about this is to draw a picture. We've got a rectangle that is, we're told nine by 7.5, right? That's what this part is. And then they make another one and you need to make sure that the shorter side is nine centimeters. So when I draw this out, I gotta make sure the shorter side is nine centimeters. I have no idea what that one is. I'm gonna set up a ratio, nine over X is equal to seven and a half over nine. Solve this, we cross multiply. And then we just divide by seven and a half. And the calculator tells me the answer is 10.8, which is letter C. Okay, question number 36. They tell us some dimensions and they wanna know the area. Now, if you forget the area formula for a rhombus, which most people do, it's okay. This thing is drawn to scale. If the whole way from A to C is five, then halfway here will be 2.5. And if from B to D is six all the way across, well, half of it would be three. And so what I'm gonna do is find the area of this one triangle here and multiply it by four. Now well, a triangle is half times the base times the height. And like I said, we're gonna multiply it by four because there's four of those, right? So that answer turns out to be 15, which is letter J. Okay, 37, it just worded very weirdly. We're told one number is 25% of a second number. So I could think of it as being like, you know, you're 25% of some unknown second number. And then they tell you the second number is 70% of a third number. So this second number is going to be 70% of some unknown third number. I have no idea what that is. And they want to know what the first number is. What percent of the third number? Well, multiply your percents. And when we do that, we wind up with letter A, 17.5%. That one was a little rough. Not too bad, though. You just had to think about it. Question number 38. We're asked to find out how much we would charge for all this. And we're told that it's $2 per square foot. Well, we need to find the area of this. So we've got a trapezoid here. Now I know some people may have thought about breaking that trapezoid up into triangles, but this corner right here is gonna present some problems for you because this dimension of 33, it goes beyond the dashed the dash line there. It's gonna be troublesome. You're better off finding the area of the rectangle and the area of the triangle. So the area of this rectangle here would be um, 60 times 30, which is um, 1,800. 
Now, trapezoid formula, it appears in every three or four ACT exams. It's height divided by two times base one plus base two. Now the bases, that's these parallel sides and the height is how far apart they are. So it's gonna be 36 over two because the height is 36 and the two bases. Well, this base is 33 and then this other base would be 18 plus 30 plus 27 and that gives us 75. And I worked that math out, we wind up with 1944. Add those up and we get 3744. Now be careful. Um, oh, luckily they didn't give us that as an answer. Good. Okay, $2 per square foot times those by two, we get 7488, which is choice K. Okay, two more questions to go, and that's it. Um, this one, we're told that um, 30 per, whoops, 30 percent of the grade is from homework, and then 70 percent comes from tests. So, so if I think about it, homework is 30 percent, and the tests are 70 percent. Now, I tell something else here that the final exam will count for 20% of the test average. What percent of the science final exam grade is, is from the final? Well, this, right, the final exam is gonna be 20% of that. So I should be thinking about 20% of that 70%. And I work that out, I get letter C, 14%. Okay, last one, 40 got a rectangle with an area of 30. Okay, so I got a rectangle here and the area is 30. Both are integers for length and width. That means no decimals allowed, that's helpful. Which of the following cannot be the perimeter in inches? So the units are agreed, they're both in inches. Which of the ones could not be the perimeter? Well, it's gonna be a trial. You know, there's, there are ways to go about this, but I think ACT wise, the quickest way is just to try numbers out. Like to get an area of 30, the sides could be one in 30, right? Because one times 30 is 30. Well, if that's the sides, well then the perimeter of that would be 62, right? Because you'd have a 30 and a 30, a one and a, you know, you'd have this kind of picture, one, one, 30, 30. Well, 62 is possible. The question says, cannot be the perimeter. It's in capital letters, but sometimes people miss it. So I'm gonna cross off K because that can't be it. Two other numbers that give us 30 are two and 15, right? Two times 15 is 30, but that perimeter would wind up to be 34. So I'm gonna eliminate H. Um, other numbers multiply to be 30, three and 10, but that perimeter would be 26. So get rid of G. And then another number to multiply to get 30 would be probably six and five. And that perimeter winds up to be 22. So letter J is the answer to one's not possible. Um, there are some quicker ways to go. Like when we did this one in 30, that perimeter is 62. And then the next factor pair was way less. That kind of told me that 60 couldn't be an answer because there's nothing there between a 62 and a 34 if you look at these choices, but sometimes we tend to overthink these questions, but not too bad, all right? So keep your practicing. This was um, the you know middle of the test and the best way to go is by time practice. So we're gonna do some time practicing for math um, for a bit here, work on your speed of how quickly you can answer these questions. So good work and um, we'll try again next week.